Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing good. So in this video, again, we will solve a couple of problems in greedy algorithm. These are Spodge problems and uh, Spodge has varying difficulty. And sometimes you will see that the tag attached to a problem is different, but it can be solved using some other approach. So for example, if dynamic programming is written on a tag, it need not always be solved using dynamic programming. Greedy approach also can be used in some cases. So like that, we will be solving problems using greedy algorithm. Okay, so before we start solving, I would like to tell you about an ebook. This ebook over here, as you can see over here, it is written by a person, a software engineer who himself has worked in many multinational companies and uh, he has collected all his experience and written in this book. It contains 90 plus DS algo chapters, 15 plus HR questions. Okay. So this ebook has been crafted very well. It is organized very neatly and uh, all the important data structures are there like trees, graphs, searching, sorting algorithms. Both of them are there basic data structures. Uh, if I have to take you to one, uh, for example, see, you can click on the link as it's an ebook, you can click on the links. For example, if we go here, Q data structure, what is a Q data structure? People who are beginning to learn data structures or you want to prepare for interview, you need a consolidated place uh, or you just need a one particular element which has all the, uh, required info so this ebook is there for you okay so this is very neatly done as you can see here so please buy this book the link is in the description of this video and it's for a very affordable price so please check it out so let us see today's problem today's first problem spodge problem it is called die hard so as you can see, the tag over here is dynamic programming. You can solve using dynamic programming also, but greedy method is more uh, understandable and like it's easy actually. It, it makes the problem easy. So let's read the problem statement. Read it along with me. The game is simple. You initially have H amount of health, A amount of armor. At any instant, you can live in any three places, fire, water, air. After every unit of time, you have to change your place of living. For example, if you're living currently on fire, you have to go either on water or air. Say, okay, now some conditions are given over here. If we step on air, our health increases by three, armor also increases by two. So if you step on air, both health and armor increase that we can understand fine. If we step on water, our health will decrease by five and our armor will decrease by 10. So stepping on water, what will happen? Health and armor, both of them will decrease. And if we step on uh, into fire, our health will decrease by 20 and our armor increases by five. So if health or armor becomes negative or zero, then we will die. We have to find maximum time we can survive. And initially we can choose to stay at any of the place. Like the first move, we can be at any place, either air, water or fire. So given T test cases, every test case has input H and A. Okay. So, what did we understand from the problem before going to the test case examples? What did we understand? So first of all, we understood that every alternate second, we have to keep changing our position. So you tell me if we can choose a position, which one we will like to choose. Obviously we would want to be in air because when we are in air, our health increases by H and armor increases by two sorry health increases by three sorry and armor increases by two so this is the best option because why we don't want to die so fast we want maximum time survival so we will always want to be in air 
but we always can't be we can only be on alternate seconds because for example if the first second i am on air next second i have to be either on water or fire the third second i'll come back to air fourth second again either i have to go to water or fire fifth second i'll come back to air like that so every alternate second i will definitely come back to air as it is the best option but the question comes what should i choose either water or fire uh, when i can't choose air so this we have to do greedily only like uh, see if water we are choosing our health is decreasing by 5 and our armor is decreasing by 10 and if you are choosing fire health is decreasing by 20 and armor is increasing by 5 so which one should we choose at what time so uh no i have to go to my status right yeah so see we can, i can explain it to you with the code only it is very simple okay it is very intuitive to understand so there are t test cases and two variable inputs h and a so h and a i have taken as input now and i have taken a variable called time this variable denotes maximum time of survival basically this is the answer so it says how long i can survive so i will run a infinite loop like i will run a while loop and i won't put any condition here initially okay then i will check if time mod 2 is 0 why am i doing this time mod 2 is 0 because i want to know at which second i'm going to be on air or i'm going to choose water or fire so basically only two options are there air or water or fire accordingly so every alternate second i will be on air and every other alternate second i will be either on water or fire how to find out which second i am on which place so i have started from t equal to 0 right at t equal to 0 i i have assumed i am in air that is why if t mod 2 is equal to 0 so every even i hope you are understanding right the time sequence at every even time sequence timing sorry at every even time i am on air if i am on air what will happen health will increase by 3 and armor will increase by 2 okay but what if t mod 2 is not equal to 0 that means i have to change my position now so initially i was on air that is from t equal to 0 to 1 the first second i was in air then next second i should go to either water or fire what to choose now so choosing is again very simple if armor is greater than 10 i am going according to armor maybe you can go according to health also it will be the opposite that's all so if armor is greater than 10 then i am going to choose what what was the option given to me so i'll open this on another tab see so in this condition over here if armor is greater than 10 then i will reduce health by 5 and armor by 10 so i will step into water because if armor is greater than 10 i will do this otherwise i will step into fire you can try to do the other way also tell me if you get the answer like you can choose health and do it try to see if you can do the same thing with health so if armor is greater than 10 i will step into water otherwise i'll step into fire so accordingly i have decreased health and armor and decrease and increase health and armor as i'm stepping on water and fire and i'm checking if both a and h are greater than 0 then i will increase time because i'll continue that means i'm surviving 
if either one of them is less than or equal to 0 i will break out and i will print the time so this is simple only so i didn't have to use any whiteboard to explain it to you i could intuitively like it's intuitive orally i could tell it to you so there are only two options every alternate second we will jump back to air otherwise we will check where can we jump we can either jump in water or fire so i have just written two conditions for that just one if else statement that's all so this entire problem can be solved using if else statement only okay so it's quite simple so this was a simple problem you can take a look at the code again if you want some of you are asking what is this that i write it is just uh, used to increase the time execution it doesn't work always like i mean it does but it just speeds the execution by some extent it doesn't mean you will never get tle you have a chance of getting tle if this part of your code is giving tle but yeah you just include it just keep it it doesn't matter much okay so that was this problem die hard now let us see another problem and i'll just open so first of all we'll read the problem statement so wine trading in georgovia georgovia sorry i don't know what i read so there is uh where should we start reading from okay so everybody buys wine from other inhabitants of a city every day each person inhabitant each inhabitant sorry each inhabitant decides how much he wants to buy or sell so they are given some information over here but what is the actual problem there is one problem however transporting wine from one house to another results in work since all wine are equally good the inhabitants of georgiova don't care which person they are going to trade with so you can sell it to any person and any person can buy it from any person okay in this problem you are asked to reconstruct the trading during one day for simplicity we will assume that houses are built along a straight line with equal distance between adjacent houses so there are some houses so what is this problem there are houses which are arranged in a line and each house is equally distant from each other let us take let, let let every house be one unit distance away from each uh, not each other in a single line all the houses are placed at one unit distance okay transporting one bottle of wine from one house to a, an adjacent house takes one unit of work so i guess i have to open my editor not editor sorry so this problem is saying that let us take a line and there are n houses and each house is one unit distance apart from the neighboring house okay so these distances are equal fine then what else it is saying transporting one bottle from one house to an adjacent house result in one unit of work see basically we are given an array of integers and if a of i is greater than or equal to 0 that means that ith house wants to buy ai bottles and if a of i is less than 0 that means that person wants to sell that many number of bottles for example if this is the array i think you can see right 5 minus 4 1 minus 3 1 that means the person in the first house can buy five bottles of wine person in the second house can sell four bottles of wine not minus four bottle that doesn't make sense minus they are indicating so that it means he is selling 
plus is for buying minus is for selling that's all similarly third person third house can buy one bottle fourth can sell three bottles fifth can buy one bottle like that right so now we have to find or we have to print the minimum amount of work done so that every inhabitant has his demand fulfilled what does it mean every inhabitant has demand fulfilled it just means to sell every bottle of wine how many bottles of wine can we sell in this case if we take this i'll write it here so this is the test case example right 5 minus 4 1 minus 3 1 so how many bottles of wine can we sell so obviously these are people who are selling and we can sell seven bottles of wine if you carefully observe sum of the positive numbers is equal to sum of negative numbers so that means sum of the entire array is zero which means what how many people want to sell is equal to not how many people sorry how many bottles of wine can be sold is equal to how many bottles of wine can be bought so we will sell all we should sell all the bottles but we should tell the minimum amount of work done so what is the minimum amount of work done let us see that so for example as we are traversing the array from left to right we are traversing from left to right we end up at this position right we end up at this position because this is the first seller that we come across this is the first seller that we come across right this is the first seller now what we have to do we have to find the first buyer the first buyer we have to sell and first seller we have already found so let us find out the first buyer first buyer is this person in the first house right so now we have found a buyer and seller now what we have to do we have to find out how many bottles can be sold in this case in this example all the bottles can be sold because this person as you can see over here he can buy five bottles of wine whereas this person can sell four bottles of wine so this person will comfortably buy all these five bottles so what is the total cost till now what is the cost of transferring from one one house to adjacent house so cost of transferring is one so if i am selling four bottles my cost is four okay cost is 4 so let me change this to 0 now because i have sold everything now what to do now the important thing is i will find out the next seller and i will stick with the same buyer but i will decrease this by 4 because he has bought four bottles right so this will change to 1 but i will still be here only that means buyer there are two pointers basically it's like a two pointer problem now buyer and seller so seller we found first then we found a buyer then we found out how many bottles can be sold and then what did we do we basically subtracted that number of bottles which can be sold from the buyer amount that resulted in 5 minus 4 which is 1 i just marked it here right now this one this one so 1 and we change this to 0 because we can sell everything now i have to move this buyer point uh, sorry seller pointer this is seller pointer this is buyer pointer i have to move this seller pointer to find the next seller is this person a seller no because this is a positive number negative numbers in the array represent sellers so let us come to this person okay he can sell three bottles but how much can our buyer buy our current buyer can buy only one bottle so now what i will do i will 
buy one bottle and change this to zero and I will change this to minus two because one bottle is sold. Now I have to find out new buyer. So I will move this pointer to this location because this location is greater than zero which means he is a buyer. Now see seller can sell two bottles, buyer can buy one bottle so this will change to zero. This will change to minus one and now buyer pointer will move. It will come here. Buyer can buy one unit. How many units buyer can buy? This is one, right? So one unit of one bottle he can buy and one bottle I can sell. But I did not take into account how much work is done. So I have to rewind and tell you now one second. What did we do? We just saw how we can sell. So now I think you got to know how we can sell. Just it's a two pointer method. Seller, buyer. Find the seller, find the buyer. Then what is the amount of wines that can be sold? Wine bottles can that can be sold. Make the changes accordingly. That is from the buyer. You subtract the total amount from the seller. You add it. Understanding, right? From seller, you add that value which indicates that that many bottles have been sold and then keep moving those two pointers seller and buyer but we have to find out total cost for example this transaction that took place see minus two and this became zero right this became zero and this became minus two that means one bottle from this location i went to this location so it actually takes how much work three it takes three units of work because from this house to this house to this house. So three houses from each house, one unit of work. If I have to travel from one house to adjacent house, one unit of work. But I have to go to third house, so three units of work. So I have to multiply the distance from seller point to buyer point with the number of wines sold. So this is what I have to do. I hope you're understanding now. Calculate how many wine bottles can be sold and also the difference or the distance between the seller and the buyer. Multiply those two, that will be the cost. Continuously keep adding all the cost, that will be the total answer. So mentally, can you solve it now? It's very easy, right? You can get a visualization. Greedy two pointer problem, whatever you can say, it is simple. I'll show you the code now. So, according to the input, they are saying whenever n is equal to zero, uh, we should break out. Okay. So, I have taken two pointers here. Initially, both are zero, sell and buy. And I've taken a variable called cost, which represents my, my answer basically, total cost. Okay, so initially what I will do, I will find a seller. This is done, this, what is this while loop? What is that while loop doing? It is finding a seller. I think you can understand how I've written that while loop, right? That is easy to understand. I think you should understand that, right? Similarly, here I am finding a buyer. I found a seller, I found a buyer. If at all seller, that pointer reaches the last index, if seller is equal to n, sell equal to n or buy equal to n, that means all the bottles have been sold or there is no bottle to sell only. That time breakout. Otherwise, I have declared a variable called wine sold. Wine sold is minimum of a by and minus a cell. What is this representing? C. I'll erase everything. Initially, this is seller, this is buyer. Now, what is my wine sold going to be? It is going to be minimum of what is it going to be? Uh, 
it is going to be minimum of 5 and minus of minus 4. What is this basically telling us? It is telling us how many bottles can be sold. So obviously if I can, if I have four bottles to sell, but I can buy four, I can buy five, I will obviously sell four only, right? So four is lesser than five. So minimum of four and five I have to take. So that is what this statement is doing here. So it is finding out how many bottles can be sold and to the cost, that is the total cost, I'm adding this much. How many bottles can be sold multiplied by seller distance and buyer distance because that will represent the work done. This cost is not money. Cost is amount to do work. Sorry, cost is not how many bottles are sold. Cost is how much work is done. Okay. So that is the cost and every time I'm incrementing it and these two statements are very important. I have to change how because the, somebody has bought and somebody has sold. So how many bottles have been sold? How many bottles have been bought? I have to update. So this is update. This is updating it. Finally, print cost. So this is this problem. It was quite easy. Two pointer greedy. You can say whatever. Any way you can understand. So these two problems I've explained thoroughly. If you really like this, please hit the like button. Share it with all your friends in all your WhatsApp groups, college, wherever. School also, if you're watching, that's really good though. Please do subscribe to the channel. Share with all your friends and ask them also to subscribe and support me. You have been, you have been supporting and motivating me for so many months now. So thanks for that. And uh, I'll upload videos quite regularly now. So keep watching them. Keep solving them side by side. Don't just sit and see the code. So that's all for today's video. Take care. Stay safe. Keep learning. Keep growing. And uh, stay tuned. Bye.